Hello, I'm Jared Taylor with American Renaissance. The censors hate my videos. So if you like this one, I hope you'll send the link to a lot of people. Last May, a group of colorful congresspersons introduced House Resolution 414, recognizing that the United States has a moral and legal obligation to provide reparations for the enslavement of Africans. It pulls no punches. First, you, the taxpayer, are responsible for slavery from before there was even a United States of America. That is, from 1619, when the first slaves came to Virginia, until 1789, when the U.S. Congress first met. What I always find that kind of argument fascinating. It's like, oh, I'm actually uh, living in northern Florida, not southern Florida. So why should I have to pay taxes, right, based on, you know, climate change and based on all the stuff that DeSantis, on the one hand, saying that climate change is real, but is spending hundreds of millions of dollars himself on Florida because he knows that Florida is going to be underwater if he doesn't do something about this, right? Like, oh, oh why do I have to pay taxes uh, for the police force? I have guns like in a bunker somewhere, right? Um, and I'm going to kill anybody that, you know, that tries to hurt me or my family. I don't need to do that. Uh, it's just a fact of life that you are born into circumstances that you might have not controlled, but you either benefit from them or perhaps they hurt you in some way. And a social contract emerges to make sure that these kinks get ironed out. This could look like taxation. This could look like some other redistribution scheme, but that's just reality. There's nothing special about this reparations, taxation, anything else. We've been doing it, this, you know, as Western civilization. If you want to be, you know, a pro Western civ booster, you're going to have to deal with the fact that this is exactly, you know, he, he named names drops Jefferson and whatnot. I mean, this is like classic French philosophy. This is an outgrowth, right, of, uh, of all that. 170 years. We have to compensate blacks for that because the United States was founded based on black plunder. The bill says that at least 12,500,000 Africans were kidnapped from their homelands by European traders and forcibly brought across the Atlantic Ocean. Except that Europeans didn't kidnap people. Africans gladly sold them slaves that they had caught. And of that 12.5 million, only about 2.5% came to what became the United States, but we're apparently to blame for all of them. So, uh, and that specific point, right? I mean, conservatives say this kind of thing all the time. Uh, first of all, his, mis you know, his misusing basic words. Yes, black people were kidnapped, um, even if they were in fact first enslaved by other Africans in the same way that, you know, if I know somebody, you know, with a sex slave in a dungeon and I come over to his dungeon and say, you know what? After you're done with her, I want to buy her off of your hands and I bring her into my dungeon. Clearly, I fucking kidnapped her, even if there was some sort of financial transaction, right? It is still literally a, 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 a kidnap. This, this is part of a, a, a way they deny it. They'll also talk about how the Barbary pirates kidnapped Europeans. Although in 250 plus years, it's estimated about 40,000 uh, Europeans were kidnapped over 250,000 years. When we're talking about the Middle Passage, uh, the 12.5, it, it, people, how many were, were taken? Varies between 8 and 20 million. That's about midway between uh, the 2 million. There were probably, there were probably more people who died on, on route. But the, the white people uh, did also have slaving parties that went in with, with the blacks. And there has to be a market. So on, if you're paying people to go do your dirty work from one tribe to, to kidnap the other tribe, how is that any better? You know, like like you like you said, uh, if, if if you rape and, and and torture a girl that was raped and tortured, and you got her from some other pedophile or something, that that somehow makes you a better pedophile. Yeah, and, and also, I mean, like specifically, you know, looking at this coast, uh, what uh, white slavers did was. Uh, besides, you know, just like just generically buying slaves, they also instigated wars between other tribes because, you know, the vast majority of these slaves, it came uh, uh, captives of war. So it was actually good for Europeans, obviously, to create a glut of bodies, right? Because, you know, the more people that you have, the cheaper the prices, the more that you could buy, bring them back. So they're actually going from, from area to place, to place, to place, to place. And they just, you know, they just keep instigating wars. They're forming alliances. They're getting other tribes to form alliances to crush one tribe. Then they turn those tribes uh, against others and then new tribes against the tribes that they just converted. And they're just maximizing carnage, right? So they were quite instrumental and creating these wars, right? It's it, it's not just sort of like, oh, we're, you know, as if like it would even matter. I mean, like, who cares? You're just observing the wars and you're, you know, capitalizing on this. It doesn't matter, right? Um, but obviously they are more culpable than he's saying here. Blame for all of them. 
ever since the first black man set foot in the colonies. The economy of the United States in both the North and South flourished as a result of black trafficking, torture, and exploitation. Torture was apparently good for the economy. North and South, all are equally guilty. New York began to abolish slavery in 1799, but it then produced the agricultural tools that were used in southern plantations. Did you know that bodies of enslaved people were gorged and congealed in the name of white supremacist hate? Well, they were. And did you know that scholars have estimated that the United States benefited from 222,505,049 hours of forced labor? They've got it down to the hour, but no link or footnote. Respect the thing about it is like, you know, even if you don't agree with, you know, whatever measurement that they're using, you know, you're an economist, come up with your own measurement that makes sense. It's going to be some substantial number of hours, obviously, if you don't like uh, the specifics of like what the effects of the economy was, make, you know, make your own estimate. The best estimates that I've seen is uh, uh, slavery created literally an additional one unit of GDP. So whatever the GDP was, just imagine it being doubled in America simply by virtue of the fact that slavery exists. That obviously matters. And you could cut it, you know, you could slice it whatever direction that you want, but you're going to come up with something substantial. So there's no, there's no point in, you know, getting uh, uh, so lost and saying, you know, like, because we can't quite pin it down, none of this matters. Obviously it matters. The thing, the thing though, though, with uh, reparations is, even if you could get reparations uh, done for black people along the same lines as was done for just the 100,000 uh, Japanese that were interned for a few years in World War II, what you basically do is giving guys like uh, Jared Taylor here, uh, they, they there would be no programs, there would be no social programs after. We gave them money. Our debt is paid. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. I, I actually, I mean, like, uh, I, you know, I'm saying this, but it's not as if I'm like, I'm not a pro reparations in the classical sense. Like, I don't think that a, a lump sum, like, I don't want to be one of these people that says like, oh, no lump sum for you. You know, I don't trust you with it. I mean, this seems like a little bit, you know, um, uh, it, there's, there's definitely a white supremacist kind of tone to it. But at the same time, you know, for a fact that, you know, people, you know, hit the lottery or whatever, most people lose their money, right? Because they're not uh, used to it, right? Like, I, I think more than anything, instead of viewing things as reparations, we should just... You know, we should do the kind of thing where we, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats, right? If you do something like Medicare for all, obviously the disproportionately affected group is going to be, you know, Native Americans, it's going to be Black Americans because they needed the most. If you have a federal job guarantee, $25 an hour, uh, the disproportionately affected group is going to be, again, Natives, you know, some Hispanics, Black people. Uh, I, you know, I would just do it that way to, to decrease white resentment. But still, you know, functionally, it's going to be a kind of reparations because taxes are going to go up. Everybody's going to pay into it. But there's going to be groups that disproportionately benefit, even if everybody benefits. So, I mean, we don't have to go uh, any further than this. Uh, it's just, it's, I just find it funny how he keeps like throwing out these numbers and he's like mocking these statements, but you know, there, there's nothing really wrong with some of the statements that uh, have been presented thus far. Uh, and he probably just doesn't have a, a proper response.